In this video, we're going to take a look at mathematical induction proofs. Induction proofs are used to prove something is true for all n. We basically do this by showing it's true in the base case for n equals 1, and then we show that if we jump anywhere along the way up to an arbitrary spot k, if it works for k, then it's got to work for k plus 1. Right? If both of these two things are true, then since it worked for 1, it was, must work for 2, and since it worked for 2, it must work for 3, and since it worked for 3, it must work for 4, and so on. The idea is it's sort of like a bunch of dominoes. If they're all lined up properly, and you can knock the first one down, you know the first one will knock the second one down, that'll knock the third one down, and so on. You can expect them all to fall down. Now there are some special cases where the dominoes are all spaced properly, and the inductive step is true, but the basis step is never actually true. Um, we're not going to certainly see any of those this semester, that's for a higher level course, but uh, the basis step is essential in order for an induction proof to be true, uh, to be complete. You have to have both the basis step and the inductive step. The basis step we'll find out is usually a trivial step. Okay, so we're going to take a look at an example here. This is one of the classic examples um, to prove that the sum of the first n integers is actually given by n times n plus 1 over 2. And there's lots of neat proofs of this, but we're going to do this proof by induction. Uh, in, in order to do a proof by induction, we have to start first with the basis step. Right? And in this case, the basis step would be n equal 1. If we just added up the first term, of the first integer, we would get the sum equals 1. So what we have to prove is that 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, basically taking a look at this formula here and seeing that it holds for n equals 1, we need to figure out what this is. Well, this is really just 1 times 2 over 2, which is 1. And since the sum of the first n integers, in this case the first 1 integer, is equal to the formula applied when n equals 1, we have 1 equals 1, and therefore our basis step is true. Now, as a point of um, technicality here, the reason they're using the k and k plus 1 over here in part 2, the inductive step, is if you're trying to show it works for all n, it can sometimes be a little bit confusing to also use n here. But I think for students, um, having introducing a, third, a second variable here, k, can be a little bit confusing. So um, you can have two people with the same name. We can have two letters of the same name. It can be a little bit... Uh, unclear, but I think it's going to be easier at this point for the inductive step to do this in terms of n rather than k. But if you have learned a different way to do this and or at some point later need to, to learn how to do it using k, that's okay. Now for the inductive step, here's what we're basically going to do. And this pattern and this technique you can use for all examples for induction proofs. Okay, We'll mostly focus on the summation ones this semester, but you might see some other ones in the book or in a future semester. We're going to assume that if you go from i equals 1 to k, which we're just going to say is n, if you add up the first i integers, uh, n integers, we'll assume that this formula works. Okay? And then what it's up to, up to us to show is that if you go one integer further, up to n plus 1, Right. then you're going to have to also replace all the n's by n plus 1 on this side. Right. And what you can see here is that all I really did was do some basic substitution. Sorry about that scrolling there. Uh, the n became n plus 1, this n also became n plus 1, and this n here became n plus 1. Right. So I basically just substituted all of the n's here for n plus 1 because I went one further. Okay. Now, on the other side here, we can simplify what this is. Let me just change my pen. I'm having a little trouble with the, the ink here, but we'll figure this out. Uh, we're going to get n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. So what I really need to do is show that if I carry this summation out to one extra term, then eventually I'll end up with this as my formula. Now the thing is, and the key to all of these, is that I'm allowed to use this formula I'm trying to prove up to n. I just can't do it for n plus 1. So what does it mean if you take the sum of the i integers up to n plus 1? You would go 1 plus 2 plus 3. You'd go up to n, and then you'd go up to n plus 1. All right? Well, in order for you to get all the way up to n plus 1, 
one, you'd have to first go through n. Let me erase this here. Okay, it's a little bit hard to read. I've got this scrolling going on here. I'll fix that all in the future. Um, this part right here is actually what I'm assuming up here. Right? That's my sum as i equals 1 to n of i, plus I've got one additional term, the n plus first term. Okay. I know that this is already n times n plus 1 over 2, because that's what I was assuming. I was assuming that it worked up to n, and I just wanted to show that it's going to work for the next one too, the next integer. Okay. So all I really have to do now is figure out algebraically how to add these two terms together. Well, if I want to add fractions, then what I need to do is basically get a common denominator, distribute this here, and distribute this here, or if I want to be clever about it, right, I can notice that there's a common factor of n plus 1. Right, so I could always multiply things out and refactor, but I could also recognize that if I take the common factor of n plus 1 out, what I get left with is an n here plus a 2 here. Right. And that's the formula that I wanted to show. The proof is now done. Okay. The basic strategy for all of these induction proofs is you're going to assume that it works up to k, or in this, we're just going to do it in n, and then we're going to go one further. Right? So we went one step further here to n plus 1, and then we had to make that substitution in our rule and show that if we go one step further in the sum, we can just basically go one step further in the rule and change the formula, all the n's become n plus 1's. All right. And here we completed this induction proof. Okay, so let's look at another example. In this example, we want to find first a formula for the sum of the first n odd integers and then prove that it works by induction. Okay? So let's start with the first odd integer, 1. The sum is 1. If you take the first and second odd integers, you get a sum of 4. If we continue this to the next integer, we'll get a sum of 9. If you do this to the next odd integer, we get a sum here, and this was n equals 1, this was n equals 2, this was n equals 3, meaning 3 odd integers, 4 odd integers, and so on. Now if you take a look at the n, you're trying to always find a pattern connecting n equals 1 to this sum. If you start taking a look at the pattern here, hopefully you can see that the summation of the first n odd integers, right, and we'll have to think about how we want to write that, is going to be n squared. Okay. Now the way we're going to write the first n odd integers is to use 2i minus 1. Now normally we think of 2i plus 1 as an odd integer. That's our generic representation of odd integers. But if I did 2i plus 1, then when I let i equal 1, I would have a 3 as my first integer. Right? But now if I let i equal 1 right here, 2 times 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 1. Now when, n, when I let i go to 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. So I'll add up 1 and 3 and 5 and so on. This is the formula right here that we're going to prove by induction. Okay, So to prove by induction, okay, the first thing we need to do is do the basis step. Okay? And the basis step is basically right here. Right? We know that when n equals 1, oops, when n equals 1, I got ahead of myself there, Right, the sum is 1. Our formula, n squared, right, would equal 1 squared, which would equal 1. 1 equals 1, basis step is done. Okay. Now what we're going to have to spend more time on, and usually is where mo most of our work is in these induction proofs, is in the inductive step. Now again, in the inductive step, we're going to assume that if you were to add up from i equals 1 to n, 2i minus 1, you get n squared. And now what we have to show is that if we carry this out to the next one, letting this become n plus 1, then we're going to have to let this 
also become n plus 1. So we're going to have to show that if you carry this step, this summation one step further, one term further, okay, you're going to get this formula. Okay? Now, in general, and one of the reasons that we do these summation ones mostly, is if you add, if you want to do a sum up to n plus 1, you're basically going to take the sum up to n and then just add one more term on. So if I was going to actually write this one out, right, it's going to equal the sum as i goes from 1 to n of 2i minus 1, right, plus what happens when I plug n plus 1 in. Right? So if I were to add the first n together, which is what I have here, and then add the n plus first term together, putting that all together would be the sum of the first n plus 1 terms. Okay? Now I know by the rule that this is actually n squared. Right? I'm allowed to use, again, what I'm assuming up here, that if I go up to n, I know the sum is going to be n squared. So I basically pull that last term in the sum off, use the rule for the first term, and then I'm just going to simply distribute the two. Okay? This gives me n squared plus 2n plus 1, which if we factor and remember our factoring skills, that's really just n plus 1 squared, and then the proof is done. Okay? Most of these induction proofs will go basically the same way. You're going to have a, a rule for the sum as i goes from 1 to n. You're going to try to show that it works for as i goes from 1 to n plus 1. And you can always do that by splitting up the sum of the first n plus 1 terms as the first n terms plus the n plus first term. Right? So the idea here really is this sum got split. Right? This sum right here, instead of going all the way to n plus 1, we took the first n and then the n plus first. Right? This is the n plus 1th or n plus first term. Right, it's a little hard to read. Okay, so with some practice you should be able to hopefully get the hang of this. We'll see how this goes. All right, try some homework problems and hopefully you'll be able to get through this.